Hey Jim, how you doing? Hey, how's your dog Buster? He's fine. I just have a few questions if you're free to talk for a few minutes. I think so we are. Sure, come on back. Have a seat. All right, what's up? I have to do this paper for my science class, and I thought you'd be a good person to talk to, since you take care of our dog Buster. The paper is about rabies, and I know you're always telling us how important it is to vaccinate Buster against rabies. And for good reason, too. You know that around the world, over 55,000 people die from rabies every year. That's one person every 10 minutes. So rabies is a pretty serious disease. Wow, I didn't realize people get rabies, too. Mm-hmm, they certainly can. What causes rabies? Well, it's caused by a bullet-shaped virus that damages the brain. Rabbit dogs have been reported as early as 2300 BC, and the rabies virus has been found on every continent except Antarctica. So every animal anywhere in the world can get rabies? Well, yeah, kind of. Uh, rabies infect a lot of different animals, mostly mammals, though. Since we're mammals, it's found in people, too. In Africa and Asia, dogs are most commonly affected with rabies. And in Latin America, vampire bats and dogs are most commonly affected. In North America, rabies is most commonly found in wildlife, like raccoons, skunks, and bats, with more than 30 species of bats capable of spreading rabies. Some other animals that carry rabies virus are foxes, wild and feral dogs, wolves, mongoose, and jackals. Now, you don't have to worry too much about most of those, but rabies can come wrapped in cute little packages, too. Now, there have been several reports of rabies in kittens, and people have been exposed because it's hard to resist petting a cute little kitten. Pets, especially pet dogs and cats, can also get rabies, and that's why we make sure that pets are up to date on their shots. It's a part of what veterinarians do to protect public health. How is rabies spread? Well, the rabies virus usually spreads through saliva. So one milliliter, which is about 20 drops, can contain up to one million rabies virus particles. So when a rabid animal bites another animal or a person, their saliva passes along the infection and the victim can develop rabies. Now, once the virus infects the body, it spreads through the nerves to the brain, where it multiplies, and then it spreads back out through the nerves into the body from the brain. I don't think I'd know a rabid animal if I tripped on one. Well, sure you would, if you knew what to look for. Well, now, first of all, a rabid animal usually acts strangely. Wild animals with rabies may seem very friendly, and they may not be afraid of you. Or they may approach you like they're friendly and then suddenly attack. <coughs> now, if that happens, believe me, you'll know. Although bats aren't any more likely to carry rabies than other animals are, bats with rabies are more likely to do things that put them in contact with people. Rabid bats may fly into things or even fly into people. Sometimes they may simply fall out of the sky and onto the ground. And remember, Bats only come out at night, so if you see a bat during the daytime, stay away. Large animals with rabies may seem aggressive, or they, they may become more and more weak until they can't stand up anymore. Dogs with rabies might bite, even if they normally are very friendly. And they also might have a funny sound in their bark, or have a droopy tongue, or maybe they seem very unstable on their feet. As the infection gets worse, they become more and more paralyzed. And once an animal shows signs of rabies, it will die. I'm af afraid to ask, what happens when a person gets rabies? Well, people with rabies have flu-like symptoms at first, but then it gets much worse. They can have severe headaches or be sick to their stomach. Sometimes they choke or, or they seem to overreact to noises or touch. Then, they go into a coma and they die. Only a few people have ever survived rabies once they show symptoms. Wow, we're talking about a really scary disease here. How can people protect themselves from getting rabies? Well, luckily there are many things that you can do. First of all, never approach, handle, or pet wild or stray animals, even if they seem friendly, and especially if they look like they're sick or injured. 
This also goes for dogs and cats that you might know to be friendly, but they're not with their owners. Stay away from the animal and tell an adult as soon as you can about the animal and where you saw it. Never handle bats because their teeth are so small you may not know that you've been bitten. And if you see a bat, don't approach it or handle it. Just tell an adult. And if you wake up in a room with a bat, be sure to tell your parents or an adult even if you didn't touch it or you don't think that you were bitten. Contact your local animal control office and report the animal, including where you saw it. If you were bitten, wash the wound thoroughly with soap and water and seek immediate care from a doctor. Even if you are bitten by a rabid animal, you can be protected from rabies if you're treated quickly and you're given the post-exposure treatments. One of the most important things people can do is to vaccinate their pets against rabies. This not only protects the pet, but it protects you too. Even a pet that stays inside all the time is at risk of getting rabies, especially if uh, let's say a bat gets into the house, or let's say your pet sneaks outside of the house, or if any of your other pets go outside. It's just better to be safe. Always vaccinate your pets against rabies even if they never go out of the house. Vaccinating your pets for rabies is sometimes required by the law. Now, veterinarians work as public health officers when they give rabies shots because they're carrying out these laws to protect the public. If you have other animals as pets, such as horses or ferrets, well, talk to your veterinarian about having them vaccinated as well. What if any of our other pets get bitten by another animal? Well, first of all, if your pet's in a fight with another animal, don't get between them. You could be seriously hurt. So get an adult to help you. And if your pet is bitten by another animal, whether it's a wild animal or someone else's pet, get an adult. Call the local animal control folks and get your pet to your veterinarian right away. Now, if your pet's rabies vaccines are up to date, your pet might just need a booster. And if your pet's rabies vaccine isn't up to date, or if your pet has never had a rabies vaccine, then the animal control officers will decide what to do with your pet. Public safety is their first concern. But what if I'm bitten? I've heard that rabies shots are horrible and they hurt a lot. Well, they used to hurt a lot because they had to be given in your stomach, but that's not true anymore. Rabies shots don't hurt any more than regular shots now. Now they're given in your arm. So they're just like any other shot that you get to protect you from disease. Well, that's good. In fact, when we started talking, I was having second thoughts about doing a paper on such a grim topic. But it sounds like a worldwide problem that maybe can be solved with just some simple steps. Well, that's right. You know, a lot of it's just common sense. Rabies is a deadly disease, but it's easy to prevent rabies and to protect yourself and your family. So don't handle, pet, or approach wildlife even if the animal seems friendly. And don't touch wildlife that seems injured or sick, especially bats. Don't approach or pet stray dogs or cats, or even dogs or cats that you know are friendly, but they're not with their owners. Always ask the owner permission before petting an animal. Now, if you are bitten, tell an adult, clean the wound, and see your doctor right away. And last but not least, vaccinate your pets for rabies. Thanks, Doc. Glad to be a help, Jim. Hey, good luck with that paper. So, are you still thinking about becoming a veterinarian? You bet. <laughs> Great. Come on, I'll take a look at it. This video has been brought to you by the American Veterinary Medical Association and the Global Alliance for Rabies Control. World Rabies Day is September 28th, and it's a great reminder to get that rabies shot for your pet or to make sure they're up to date on their rabies vaccination. For more information about World Rabies Day, including worldwide events, go to www.worldrabiesday.org.